2012 meeting of the Planning Board. The first item on our agenda is the minutes of our February 7, 2012 meeting that we have in our packet. Does anybody have any comment on those minutes? Okay, anyone like to make a motion? Peter? Move to approve. A second? Second. Carol Ann, all right. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Five to none. Welcome, Henry. There had been some email discussion about adding the January minutes approval. I think we should save that for the next meeting because they were not out in our packets. Is that all right with everybody? Okay. So we will take those up at the March meeting and pick, clean that up. So the main item of business on our agenda tonight is the Fort Williams Park Master Plan. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council has referred to the Planning Board the review of the update to the Fort Williams Master Plan, Section 1968, Public Hearing. We had a fairly thorough review of this plan at our workshop, but the public has not had the benefit of that, at, at least in a televised meeting. So if you'd like to just briefly give an overview of it and then focus on the changes that you have made from, since our workshop. Good evening. I'm Bill Nickerson, uh, Chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. And um, we did have a fairly thorough discussion at the workshop, but I'll just kind of reiterate what I said there, which is that uh, uh, the master plan update, and this is an update of uh, the 2003 plan, has been a major focus of our attention uh, over the last year. Uh, the reason we've do we're doing it at this time is that uh, the town uh, comprehensive plan recommends that the master plan be reviewed every seven years, and since the last one was in 2003, this was an appropriate time uh, to, to update it. Um, throughout the process, which has, I said, uh, been over the last year, we've elicited community input. Um, we've met with interest groups within the park, uh, such as the Little League, the people who walk their dogs there, the people who are interested in Battery Blair, P the Arboretum uh, people, uh, p interested in others interested in the Goddard Mansion, and so forth and so on. We uh, had a survey, which was on the website and was also available in hard copy here. Um, to elicit people within the town and from outside a uh, vision of what they think Fort Williams should be. We had 385 responses to that, so, and that is really the first survey that has ever been done, I think, um, of that magnitude about Fort Williams. So that provided us with some insights. And then we had a public forum in September, uh, which we invited the residents to attend and, and uh, also provide their insights. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to read through this. I think the product that we have come up with is uh, easily readable, uh, fairly clear to understand. It's pragmatic, um, is not grandiose, but focuses on things such as safety, uh, preservation of some of the buildings down there, uh, traffic circulation, pedestrian cir circulation, and uh, and, and we think it's, it will be a, an important uh, contributor to the, to the uh, way the park is managed over the next seven to ten years. Within the update are approximately 90 recommendations. Many of them are relatively small um, and relatively inexpensive. Others are uh, substantially more complex and will require greater funding. So what we have done is to prioritize 10 of the more significant recommendations. And we did that just among ourselves within the advisory commission in an effort to provide some focus um, on some of the, the major things that we think um, should occur down there. And, uh, uh, but by no means is this uh, cast in stone. We view this as a fluid document that uh, sets forth a course at this point in time, but future commissions and time may uh, result in changes that uh, are different from what, I, what this plan proposes. 
Throughout the process, we've been working with Mitchell and Associates, a landscape architect firm in Portland. Um, John Mitchell, Bob Metcalf, and their staff have been invaluable in helping us get through the process. I think they've, they've just done a great job. And I will turn this over to Bob Metcalf, who will provide um, a PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I'm Bob Metcalf with Mitchell and Associates. And I guess it is for clarity. The presentation I brought tonight was the same one I presented to you folks at the workshop session. If you'd like, I can run through that, which is a little more lengthy, or I can go straight into the discussions, uh, issues that you wanted to look at amending to the master plan, addressing the public restrooms and then the vendors, which are the two items that you had asked for us. I for. think this, since this is the first televised version of this, we should go ahead and, and run through what you did at the right. workshop. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bill has kind of given you an eloquent overview of where the commission is and what the direction they were looking for in terms of updating the 2003 plan to identify a number of issues in terms of from the littlest things from new maintenance items that need to be done in the park to more significant items that could be improvements to help generate some revenue to help sustain the park. And the purpose of the master plan is to reaffirm the overall vision, goals, and objectives to continue to guide the town and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission in its deliberations and establish framework for the decision making, identify new issues and concerns as well as future needs and improvements, suggest recommendations and proposed design concepts of various projects identified as part of the process. Uh, the 2003 plan had a set of five goals and objectives for the park uh, and the commission and going through this rendition of updating the master plan added a sixth goal on there which is to establish a sta sustainable plan to maintain the quality and enjoyment of the park and the basis of that is to uh, part of what we were looking at is elements of the park that could help provide the ability to maintain the park in perpetuity in a way to hopefully gain revenue that will support the park and uh, not be a burden to the community. Uh, the driving force behind this was the Cape Elizabeth Town Council po policy statement of 1976, which states the Fort Williams is a unique community resource, which has irreplaceable scenic, natural, and historical qualities. As such, it should be dedicated to predominantly park, recreational, cultural uses, which uses preserve or enhance or otherwise fully compatible with its unique qualities and which uses are within the financial capabilities of the town. The 2003 plan took the overall park and identified it into 10 distinct areas and the recommendations uh, were based on that prior to that breakdown of the park in the 10 different areas. Uh, the first area was the meadow and chapel road as you come through the park and well there was a go to the next rendition. Uh, the first area, I find my highlighter, which is area one, which comprises the main entrance road, Powers Road coming in, the meadow area, and the Chapel Road, which was the other secondary entrance, uh, pedestrian entrance that comes in off of Chapel Road. Area two is primarily the Goddard Mansion and Battery Keys. Uh, what I'm going to do in this is show some of the recommendations that were generated during the process. And I'm not by any means going to go through all 95, but just to give you an example of some of the things that we looked at. In the case with Battery Keys, right now this is really a pretty well wide open area. There's a lot of pavement, exposed gravel. What this looks at is improving the access way coming in, creating a circular pathway around, creating a nice lawn element in here so this become a potential function area and then one of the Arboretum sites is located in this corner in here. The next area is Battery Knoll, which is this portion of the park as you come in off of Ocean Road, the high hill area and the three exposed coverings over the existing batteries. Area four is the Cliff Walk area, which comes in around by over Battery Hobart, which is the first segment of the Arboretum is under construction right now and pretty much follows along the shoreline here back over to Portland Head Light. Area five is the Portland Head Light area and the parking and the central parking lot. Area six is the green and Battery Garage. Uh, Merriman, Merriman Road comes around through here and this takes you back out towards, uh, this is Delano Park on this side. Uh, 
Area 7 is the area from the pond. This is the former main entranceway into the, into the park. The pond is in here, so Area 7 encompasses the pond, the tennis courts, the ball field with the bleachers, the parade grounds, and part of the parking access over here. And this is one of the uh, recommendations made at the, the main entrance road, which is kind of an irregular paved area, kind of a haphazard arrangement of parking, and sometimes this confuses the main entrance to the park for people who are not familiar with it. And what this does, it shows a reconfiguration of the paved area, putting a center of a landscape island in the middle and really defining how parking works and uh, managing the flow of parking, is, uh, and then pedestrian entrance coming through the, the gate area into the park. The next area is actually Officers Row, which is along Harrison Road, and you have the existing former offices quarter buildings that are rental properties, uh, uses down here. The large lawn area that leads up to the picnic structure. Uh, Kitty's Point, the informational uh, display that's up in this corner, and then there's a tennis court and basketball court down in this location in here. And then this is the parking lot uh, that serves the, uh, the picnic area. Jump too quickly. Uh, one of the improvements for the Kitty's Point area was providing handicap accessibility options to be able to get up to the high point where the current uh, informational panels are. And what we looked at in this case here, this is where Battery Knolls and the crosswalk that comes across here, creating a walkway that comes out of the picnic area parking. And this was a series of stairs coming up to get access to Kitty's Point here and then reconfiguring what was a divided access way into Farnsworth Road, recreate uh, two handicap accessible parking spaces that are a little easier accessible than the ones that are currently there, and coming in along and creating a ramp walkway that would bring you back up and around to provide that handicap accessibility up to, to Kitty's Point. One of the other improvements we were looking at is to how to expand uh, the functional use of the existing picnic structure. And part of that is creating an outdoor patio area uh, in addition to the one that currently exists on this side and a potential for an out outdoor fire pit. And then also to improve the access way coming up out of the parking lot right now. This is kind of a, an eroding gravel access way that comes up through and this is just introducing some granite excuse me, potential granite stairs to help make that transition up to the, uh, the picnic area. The next area is Battery Blair in the central parking. Uh, this is Battery Blair uh, in this area. The turnaround as you come in off of Ocean Road and the central parking lot area. One of the things we looked at as part of potential financial uh, benefit for the park is the possibility of developing of a visitor center and this was one of the locations that had been selected as an opportune location right near the central parking area the turnaround reconfiguring part of that central turnaround area the accessibility to battery blair to the lighthouse and uh, in this case here we've shown also the potential for an outdoor cafe as as another element of revenue generation And then the last area is what's referred to as a Southwest Preserve, which encompasses part of the multi-purpose the multi field. This is Delano Park. Uh, part of the town in the park maintenance facility is located in here, and the dog walk area, off-leash area, pretty much comes back around and ends just about up in this corner uh, by where the ball field is. Uh, the new playground structure is located in here. As I said, the Little League field is here. And then this is the maintenance facilities for the park, and there were former maintenance buildings for the fort itself. Uh, the recommendations were then broken down by categories, uh, circulation and parking, signage, utilities, sanitation, restroom facilities, structures evaluation, the park ecology, landscape materials and features, park management, administration, and maintenance. In parking and circulation, we were asked to go in and evaluate the current situation and changes since 2003 in terms of pedestrian safety, how parking is working, how the park is being used at various times, and we spent numerous hours out there at various times to evaluate the use of the park, as well as the, the questionnaire enlightened us with a tremendous amount of information that was invaluable in terms of coming up with the plan itself. Uh, structures, there have been numerous studies that have already been done for the park in terms of some of the uh, 
the Battery Blair, the Bleachers, uh, the Goddard Mansion, that information was incorporated more into the, the, as appendix to this report. So there wasn't any further study done at this point, but just more or less referencing that. And then the landscape materials and features was an evaluation, the, an update of the evaluation of the plant materials that are there right now. There was a forestry plan that had been done for the park, which is also incorporated as part of the documentation. It's a continuing body of documentation for the master plan. You know, it looks like my slide got cut again. Uh, prioritization. There were top 10 recommendations, as uh, Bill had alluded to, that of the 95 plus or minus recommendations we had, there were some significant improvements, and the commission members ranked what they felt were the uh, significant improvements to be made to the park that would be beneficial uh, to the function of the park as well as potential for uh, revenue generation. And the first one on here, which I'll try to use my laser pointer rather than a computer. I think I just pointed it. Excuse me. There we go. That helps. The first improvement, uh, priority one, occurs in area one, and that is improvements for the Ship Cove parking area. This is the existing configuration of the parking. It currently is dead end. There's no means of uh, turning a vehicle around at the end. If there are cars in the last two parking spaces, you have to back around and do probably about a six point turn to be able to turn yourself around. So what we were looking at, and this was addressed in the previous plans as well as improvements that need to be addressed as far as circulation was concerned. And this is the recommendation that came about the existing parking, as I said, ends roughly here. And what this does is provides for a turnaround to allow vehicles to come in, maneuver their way around, which would include buses uh, if they so inclined to come down in this area, which now would be difficult for them to get in. As part of this, we wind up with a net gain of 23 parking spaces, taking it from 47 existing spaces up to 70. Also, as part of the improvements are re uh, improving the pedestrian circulation that heads up to the Goddard Mansion improving the access way that goes out to Battery Keys, as well as pedestrian circulation along the head of the parking, between the parking and the beach, and out to the, uh, the picnic area. The next one also was located in uh, the uh, area one. This is the Ship Cove uh, picnic slab. This is a former building on site uh, that's been used as a picnic area, a gathering area. Uh, currently, uh, the existing concrete slab is in deterioration. Some of the walls are uh, cracking. And part of the improvements for this are to replace the slab and to uh, correct some of the foundation cracks and to put a uh, railing around the, uh, the perimeter of the, uh, the facility itself. The next improvement, priority three, occurs in area seven. And that is to, oh, excuse me. And that is to look at the feasibility of a group uh, gathering area. And this location up here is above where the bleacher area is. This is part of the existing overflow parking uh, area. And what was we were looking at, and this is a location within the park that still had great views. It was a, away from the major activity of the park uh, that could also be able to be used for hosting uh, receptions or weddings or public events. Uh, part of the evaluation that would be looking at being able to bring water and power up to serve that area. In this case, it's really stabilizing the area. This would be an area in which tents and whatnot would be put up, but no physical structural improvements would occur in that location. The next one is area four, which is for the cliff walk. And the issue with the cliff walk area, as you can see from this photograph, is along the, the walkway itself, and there's a turn in this location here. You have a significant steep drop off along several sections of the cliff walk. And what the, uh, this phase is, is to evaluate the ability to come back and put in either a guardrail type of fence system along there to protect for providing protection along the shoreline uh, in these particular locations. It's not looking at putting a, a fence all the way along, but just in those areas where the public presently gets very close to the edge. And uh, 
Unfortunately, my figures are cut off in the lower corner, and I don't remember what those are, but those cost numbers you've seen in some of the priorities include the design, uh, permitting, and construction, and those are based on today's dollar amounts. It's $58,000 in the Thank you. plan here. Uh, the next one occurs in um, priority five, occurs in the area seven, and this is, for, oh, keep hitting the wrong button on this thing. And that is for the reconfiguration of the access way coming up to the overflow parking area. This is what's referred to as Wheatley Road. If you're coming in off of Powers Road, Ship Cove is down in this location. Currently, Wheatley Road makes an acute angle coming back up towards the overflow parking. It's a rather difficult turn for larger vehicles, and in this proposal, what we're looking at is to reconfigure that entrance so it becomes a 90 degree to Ocean Road and then sweeps back into the uh, existing alignment for Wheatley Road. And that's to provide better accessibility up to the, uh, the overflow parking and further on up to where that uh, other event area is being uh, looked at. The next one is, occurs in area one is also, and that is for the, cent the central power station, which is located off of Powers Road. And that's the structure as you come in off the main access, ro main access road. Uh, currently, uh, this lower portion of roof in here, the vegetation is, from the slope has come down and encroached on the roof. Uh, there is leakage within the roof of water coming in. Uh, creating some additional cracking. Uh, the proposal on this is to come in and clear off that invading vegetation on the roof and seal that area with a uh, bituminous uh, membrane as well as sealing the upper level and then securing some of the access way into the, uh, the facility until such time as further improvements are determined uh, to be used for that facility. The next one uh, goes back into the Ship Cove area again. Uh, this is a situation where most of you are probably familiar that this is the entrance into the parking lot. Powers Road is the main road coming in, then you come back onto Ocean Road. This is a wide open intersection in here, and it's fairly ill-defined in terms of vehicles coming and going. And in this proposal, it's to take that access way and create that more, again, of a 90-degree intersection with Powers Road before it merges into Ocean taking that section right there, which is currently pavement, and turning that into a landscaped area, providing a safe refuge for pedestrian crossing off the existing sidewalk that comes in along Powers Road to get you across the Ship Cove and vice versa back from Ship Cove over to this side. The next one is in the Southwest Preserve. Uh, and this is in regards to some, some improvements for parking and circulation. Uh, as I said, this is the maintenance facilities here. This is the playground. Uh, what currently exists for parking is kind of an informal parking in some of the grass here between the two buildings. There's a large green area in the center here. Parking just haphazardly occurs around that. And there's minimal structured parking in around the uh, play structure right now. And the proposed improvements uh, are to formalize the parking in between the two maintenance buildings here and the other maintenance building on this side, reconfigure the parking along the edge of the playground, pulling the pavement further away from the playground. Right now there's a fence that exists right along this edge and the parking is right up to the fence. So this will provide some additional buffering between the parking and the playground area. Reconfiguring this open gravel area to provide some additional parking and then looking at reconfiguring the parking that exists right now in this area to give access to the playground, to the storage buildings, access for the Little League field use, as well as for the tennis court, basketball court, and for the dog walk area. And most of the people will park, park in this area here, my laser point is given out, and have access to the park through here. And the next one uh, is to, uh, for a second potential picnic structure. This is also located in the, uh, just off the area six and in the corner area 10. And this is where the multi-purpose field is for orientation. This is Battery Blair. This is the 
unimproved or repaired sections of battery blare. Uh, the green is out here, battery garage is located here. And this is siting a second picnic pavilion similar in size to the existing one. Provides opportunities for views out to the water. It pulls it away from the active areas and has a, a ability for vehicular access to get service to it and then parking is within a relatively reasonable distance uh, for people to get access to the, the picnic pavilion itself. And then uh, the next priority 10 is to take the parking, the existing parking for the existing picnic structure and to reconfigure that. Uh, we wind up gaining five spaces or allowing a, a wider landscaped area between Ocean Road and the parking to give more of a, a buffer in between there. Right now it's a very narrow strip, uh, mostly mulch. Uh, and this would be looked at as a gravel parking area with some defined end islands to uh, identify the parking in a little more controlled means. So those are the 10 uh, priorities. Uh, and again, that's the overview of the park. Uh, when we were before the board the last time, there were a couple of questions raised in terms of, since the master plan is the guiding zoning for the park, the points were raised about public restroom facilities and the uh, need for clarification within the master plan. And what we've done is updated the area nine, which is the Battery Blair Central Parking Area, and added the text to 9.6, which basically says, explore the option of creating a visitor center in the open lawn area between the central parking lot of Battery Blair. Consideration should be given to the feasibility of including public restrooms into any proposed facility. Strong consideration should be given to extending public sanitary sewer to service the proposed facility. And then it went on to the rest of the language that was in there in terms of the types of uses, which uh, adjunct uses may include, but not limited to a gift shop, museum, cafe, or restaurant. Uh, work with the battery Blair study, a significant grade change uh, would occur if the battery is excavated. And that issue is if, uh, go back here. Where did I have it? Uh, sorry, I had that back at the beginning. The issue with working with the battery Blair group that's studying the ability to unearth a portion of the battery is that right now the basement elevation, I believe, that's buried right now is about 24 or 28 feet below what existing grade is right now. So to unearth that backside of the, uh, the battery itself in juxtaposition with the visitor center would, something, would be something that would have to be looked at in terms of whether this really is a viable location for that. So that was part of what that language is referencing in that location. The next part of the plan recommendations, part three, uh, that same language that's in 9.6 was added underneath underneath 3.3, which is utilities, sanitation, and restroom facilities. So that just reinforces, again, the public restrooms and where public restrooms would occur. The other item that was referenced in terms of a use within the park is currently where the park uh, uh, introduced vendors this past season, and that way that has never been in the, the master plan before. We've added the language to allow that as a permitted use to continue that. And we've added that under the uh, Park Management Administration and Maintenance of 3.7. And we've added the, the last bullet in there, which says continue to support the use of vendors in the park as a source of revenue generation. And we've left that vendors as generic because it gives them the ability, not just the food carts, which are presently there, but if there's some other viable opportunities that come up, it's covered within the plan itself. Do we so, have the language for the last two? Was that in? Yes, you did. Okay, but I'm looking for the language for the, the, the last two points in the that in points. that packet. That's what I'm not finding. Okay. I see the area nine language. Area nine is nine. 
It was 9.6. Right, but I don't see the other. Maybe I just didn't get the whole thing. Um, it was under the maintenance, wasn't it? Uh, the other one in reference to uh, 9.6 is under 3.3, utility, sanitation, and restroom. One, two, three, four, five pages in. Okay, that, this was not in my packet. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. Okay, I missed that part. Okay. Great, thank you. All right. Okay. So those were the changes the board asked us to look at, and um, be happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, we do have a public hearing scheduled for tonight. Does anyone on the board have any questions before we open the floor? All right, our public hearing is open, but I don't see anyone here who is seeking to speak. We did receive at least one comment um, in our, our package. Positive comment. Positive comment, yes. So seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. So anyone on the board have any questions or comments? This all seems very responsive to what we had discussed. Yes, Joe. Um, do you know overall how many additional parking spaces you created in the park? 23, 28. I have to go back and cheat. And the only reason I ask is I was looking in the 2003 Mm -hmm. plan, and they talked about not, I think, chasing after, uh, not to increase the number of parking spaces. Right. Um, so I don't know, was there much discussion about the, the uh, advisability of increasing the number of spaces? I think that what generated the number of parking spaces, as in the case of Ships Cove, it was turning ability. and. Uh, the logical way in terms of being able to make that turning there was an advantage to add some additional parking spaces and that we wrestled with that whole issue down there and it seemed if we we're going to go to that expense gaining 23 spaces since it's a very actively used space and then the potential for the picnic area to expand the potential use of that as a rental uh, area that the 23 spaces made sense to go down there the uh, central of uh, the parking that serves the existing picnic structure. Basically, the, the 1990 plan, as well, I believe, the, the 2003 reference improvements to that parking area, and basically is to make it more formalized. Right now, it's an existing open gravel space, very ill-defined. And by actually defining that, we actually gain green space back, but gain five parking spaces by reconfiguring that. Uh, the one up here uh, by the, uh, the maintenance facilities, right now, the only parking that's even remotely Organize, organize there's some parking over in this location in here and a couple of spaces up in this location in here. Otherwise, there's a few spaces here and everybody else makes it more of a free-for-all parking around this green area, parking over the lawn here, parking in this gravel area. So that was also discussed in the 90 plan to make it more efficient. And this is more an attempt to make an efficient use of space to provide more organized parking that doesn't really exist in that area. So it wasn't a case of chasing parking, it was improving the existing condition up there to make it a more organized and usable area. So in terms of total number, I'm going to say, because I didn't, let's see, 81 and 23, it's about 114 parking spaces, essentially. There's a net gain by reconfiguring everything. Victoria? Um, well, it's not a meeting unless I'm pointing out some obscure record-keeping <laughs> items. So I noticed that um, it says that everything in part two is cross-referenced in part three. So FYI, mm -hmm. I noticed that the following is not cross-referenced. Uh-oh, hold on. Find my pencil. And I wasn't sure if it was by design or otherwise. So. Okay. This is just an FYI. Sure. 6.1. 6.1. 7.12. 7.12. Mm -hmm. 8.13. And on 8.8, .8, you list only one part of a two-part recommendation. Okay. Just FYI. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Henry? Yeah, it's just some, it was a follow up on the parking. You've got 100 and some odd parking spaces, and then all of a sudden you ran out of parking spaces, but a very large area of the park. So you end up with possibly people running around looking for parking spaces when there aren't. Is there any method of telling them that the park is full, that the park is boxed, so or that there are vacant parking spaces? Right now, I don't believe you do any. Sure, I'll let Bob handle that one. Bob Manley, Public Works Director. Uh, currently on the weekends, we open up uh, the area above the bleachers for overflow parking. So the park rangers will put up a sign that points to additional parking in that area. Again, it's not formalized, but on any given Saturday or Sunday, there can be 20 or 30 cars up there, depending on the weather, depending on what's happening in the park that day. So that's sort of our answer now to overflow parking. But other than a large event, I'm not sure if we've ever had a time when the, there is no parking available in the park. Sorry, there, I, don't, I don't believe there's been a time, unless there's been a special event such as like a Portland Symphony concert or a large group use that, or Beach to Beacon that we've had, you know, there's been no available parking in the park. I have a question about um, timing and moving forward. I know that's not part of the plan, and I understand that if any of these specific recommendations come to implementation, we may well have a full site plan review and get a lot more detail. But the plan does, when it gives estimated costs, talk about priorities one, two, five, and seven um, being constructed in one phase for cost efficiency. Is there any prospective timing as to when that final planning is going to be done. Is that planning in process? I'm going, to I'm going to turn that one back to Bob. I thought you might. <laughs> Those projects have been proposed in the fiscal 2013 budget that the town council will be reviewing. And once uh, that those items uh, have been approved as part of the budget process, we'll be coming back to you for a formal site plan review of those. Our intent was to package those to achieve some economies of scale. But we will be coming back to you after July 1st. Uh, for site plan review of those projects. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else have any more questions? All right, I guess the, since this is similar to an ordinance referral from the council, um, the council is looking for a recommendation as to whether they should or should not go forward with for this plan. Does anyone want to make a motion? motion. Carol Ann? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the Fort Williams master plan amendment submitted and the facts presented in accordance with section 916-8D master plan amendments, the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board recommends the 2012 Fort Williams master plan amendments to the count, town council for consideration. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further comment? All in favor? All right, it is unanimous for the six of us. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right, that is the final item on our agenda this evening. If no one else has anything they want to add, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>